Star Wars geek girls. They're geek girls that like Star Wars. And sometimes cry. Hello and welcome to Star Wars Geek Girl. I'm Zoe and as usual I'm here with Lizzie. Hello. And we are going to be talking about some Star Wars. Star Wars. Quite a few Star Wars. Um, so first we got some Star Wars news this week about the Young Jedi Adventures, which is a uh, kids show coming to Disney Plus May 4th that was first announced last celebration. Um, so they, well, they announced the release date May 4th. Um, so May 4th, so far we're getting both Visions Volume 2 and the Young Jedi Adventures. Um nice. We also got some pictures and the animation. It looks absolutely adorable. And I love Nubs. Mm-hmm. He's so cute. I love Aww, him that so much. Cute. <laughs> He's so cute. Who's um, Nubs? The little blue one. Oh, I like the, the droid. Fluffy. The droid is also... They're all very cute. <laughs> the droid is also very cute. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like it's... that, you know, they're all supposed to be tiny, but like the droid... In the that style is, is like extra tiny. Yeah. Um. So it's about a group of younglings and their not Jedi friend and the droid, um, learning lessons from Master Yoda and going on presumably some adventures. And it says yeah. they're studying the ways of the Force, exploring, helping people, all sorts of things. Very exciting. Um. We also got the cast information. So, Kai Bright Star who in the, like the one picture they have with Yoda that they announced it with, he's the kid right on the right of Yoda, right next to him. That's Kai Brightstar, played by Jamal Avery Jr. I looked up Jamal Avery Jr., and he seems to be like a newer child actor who hasn't really been in like anything yet, so it's very exciting. Um, same thing for Lee Soleil, who is the Pantoran girl, and she is very cute. I love her design. It's super fun. I hope mm-hmm. there's so many girls doing Halloween costumes of her uh, next October. Um, but she's played by Julia Donenfield, who also seems like a newer uh, child actor. And then Nubs, our lord and savior. Uh-huh. He's just so fluffy. Um, <laughs> he's played by D. Bradley Baker. Of course. Who obviously plays the clones. He's also Appa and Momo in Avatar. And he does the um the hamster noises for Hammond. Yeah, for Overwatch. Wrecking Ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, he does a lot. He does everything, truly. He's also Perry the Platypus. Um, hmm. So I'm very... I'm not, Since it's Steve Bradley Baker, I'm like, I wonder if Nubs is just going to make little sounds. You know? Because Steve Bradley Baker is very good at that. <laughs> So, maybe it'll just sound like a clone trooper, though. I think that would be funnier. You know? Yes. Um, Yeah. Yes. (laughs) I just, I only found out, like, really, really recently about T. Bradley Baker being Wrecking Ball. And I was like, man, how did I, how did I not know? (laughs) Um, I just really like the amount of voices he does. Yes. Um... Then we also have Nash Durango. So those are the three Jedi younglings. Then we have Nash Durango, who is their not Jedi friend, the tags long, who has a pretty sick looking jacket. Um, played by Emma Berman, who was hmm. uh Julia from Luca. Uh okay. I've not seen Luca. <gasps> I've heard it's very good. Why I've not you seen, seen it. Luca. I'm sorry, I just have it. I I will at some it's point. So it's cute. on my it's on my watch list. It's just a very <laughs> long watch list. That's fair. Um, and then the little droid, the tiny, tiny little droid, is RJ83, who's played by Jonathan LePoe, who is um Gunji, along with some various voices in oh. the Bad Batch. He also does various voices in Resistance, and he does the robot voice of Wrecking Ball in Overwatch. Oh, interesting. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> Bradley Baker does the hamster. We have the whole Overwatch. Wrecking Ball here. I know, we have both sides of Wrecking Ball um which is very exciting Mm -hmm. and then yoda is played by oh sorry 
Is this tiny droid going to have the voice of Wrecking Ball? I hope it does. I really do. I also hope it does. (laughs) I would love that, (laughs) um, personally. Um, Yeah, and then Yoda in this series will be played by Peter Michael, who's done various voices in series like Call of Duty, Kung Fu Panda, Marvel's What If. Also, he does, like, one of the commercial voices for, like, the Strucker Watch in the WandaVision. And he has actually played Yoda before because he has played Yoda for Robot Chicken. Um, mm-hmm. so that's cool. All right. So yeah, that's Young Jedi Adventures. It looks really cute. Um, it's definitely like a tiny little baby show, <laughs> and that's okay. It's so cute. It's very exciting to know that like there's going to be a, a lot of kids whose first like real introduction to Star Wars will be like the High Republic. I think that's pretty cool um Mm -hmm. and it just looks so cute and i love nubs um (laughs) i can't wait you know we have grogu capitalism right now i can't wait for the rise of nubs capitalism um i will buy all of all of it i think it's so cute yes (laughs) he's so cute he's got the little teeth Mm -hmm. he's so cute tiny extremely tiny I know. Um, so yeah, that's the series. Looks very cute. I'm totally gonna watch it. Um, it's adorable. Yeah. And yeah, so May fourth, look out for Young Jedi Adventures. Um, to watch for yourself, or you know, if you have little kids, or if you're babysitting any little kids, you can plop them in front of Star Wars. You know, if you don't already do that already, which (laughs) a lot of people already do, but they Mm -hmm. have. Slightly more age appropriate Star Wars, depending on how old they are. So yes, hey, very exciting yeah. stuff. Very cute, so cute. Um, yes. So that is that news. Uh, I think that's really the only like news that came out this week. Mm-hmm. Best but news. We though. got the top top tier news. Like, mm-hmm. why, the why are they even making any Star Wars that's not Young Jedi Adventures, honestly? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. what is even, like... It's They're missing the whole, out. The whole reason we have any other Star Wars is building up to Young Jedi Adventures. That's really all we need. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, well, that's that. Um. So that was our, our news for the week. But um, we also got two um absolutely top tier episodes of the bad batch yes um, and i'm very excited to talk about them uh we'll just do it uh, yeah. spoiler fee review oh. fantastic <laughs> i think easily my top episodes of the season so far which and i've mm. really liked this season so far so that's saying mm. a lot um i just thought it was so interesting like from a world building perspective, a lot of great character moments. Um, we got to see some other characters we haven't really seen in a while. Mm-hmm. A long, very happy long to see time. In a very long time. I was wondering where they were. Um, mm-hmm. and just if they were safe. <laughs> a great time. Yes, very interesting. Um, and it's it's definitely very. It feels to me like a very pivotal moment in this season, and I'm excited to see the repercussions of it for for everyone in the short term we kind of know the repercussions in the long term i guess but in the Mm -hmm. short term i'm excited to see what happens yeah uh i mean uh my spoiler free review uh that's different from yours i mean i also (laughs) just really liked it it was really good um there were a few points where I was like scared because I was like no I'm not a cliffhanger and I was like oh wait (laughs) I have another one um so that was nice uh you know when Star Wars gives you two or just just any amount they give you um my mom and I are spoiled so like we like having um just all of the episodes all at once like in Netflix and stuff Oh, I hate um, that. I, I, hate li- that. I mean, I like both. Both is good. But, like, if there is, like, a point or, like, a uh, one, a show that does have it, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to watch it all, like, right now. 
Um, I, I just hate it's so stressful yeah because it's like it's like well if I don't watch it all immediately I'm gonna get spoiled (laughs) yeah (laughs) it makes it harder to keep up with stuff because I'm like like Wednesday came out if that was a weekly series I totally would have watched it week by week but when all dropped at once it was too much of a commitment and then I was like well now I don't care because everyone's over it now so Mm -hmm. what's the point yeah I am I'm kind of suffering now from I wanted to watch all of supernatural which is a mistake why like it's you, very good why? is but it it's, i i mean i like it it's it's funky. how far well okay how far are you okay so there's like 15 seasons i know i've i've, <laughs> I've watched it okay that's um, why <laughs> no, that's okay. why so when i um went to california my mom like how me and my mom hung out was oh let's watch supernatural and then like the whole day was gone um but she was like oh let's start supernatural and i was like oh okay cool because my mom also watched all of it but she didn't start it where it should have started and she just started on season two and i was like oh wait well what happened and then she didn't bother to explain it to me either so I was like, okay, I just gotta put the pieces together. So I'm only on season one right now, but like I've okay. seen season okay. two. Season one's season one's good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it drags. I'm sure. Yeah. But... The, the, that's another Voltron situation where the fandom was. Oh no! I, an interesting that's, experience. Yeah. Um, try not to wow. get into that. That you fandom. don't even understand what you activated within me when you said. <laughs> <laughs> Super- again that was i really traumatized i'm not even kidding that was like a it's oh one God. of those things where uh it's like you just if i say it. i like evangelion then i know that i like evangelion apart from the scenes that i should not like evangelion because there are some things where it's like why would you put that in there oh right it's a stupid anime but when I hear other people say, I love Evangelion, I'm like, okay, so I gotta stay away from you, is what I'm hearing. Um, my dad likes Evangelion, but, like, he's in the same boat as me, where he's like, alright, let's just skip this episode, oh, you don't need to see this part, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, so, yeah. Uh, it's, supernatural. Fandom- it's not as much the show, I mean, kind of, it's, you had to be there. <laughs> it was, um, Wow. I don't think I was... really want to. No, you don't. It's interesting. I mean, yeah. honestly, the first couple seasons, not couple, first good bit of seasons, pretty solid. Really good show. Yeah. I really love the first couple, especially. Um, yeah. Wow. It just got CW'd. Um, mm. Wow. Interesting. Well, you'll actually don't update me. I, I can't deal with that. Yeah. I um. Wow. I, uh, what's it called? I don't, I want to watch it because I'm bored and, like, it feels like something that I, like, should watch just to, like, have in my head. I also just like, uh, like, horror, even if it's not that scary. Like, I like seeing different ghost stories. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just like... no. It's it's really good for for like it's a good monster of the week show mm-hmm. for a while. It's long though. Like I can only lo- watch like one episode, and then I'm like, all right, it's bedtime. Cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess. Well, yeah. That... I'm sorry to have awoken something. No, that was just that was a lot to or hear. remind something in you. That was just. A lot just came back to me. That was what else um... am I watching? I'm watching Bojack Horseman, but that is like, like, if <sighs> I need breaks from it, it's that traumatizing of a show. <laughs> um, it's a it's a good show, but it also shows a lot of like, like depression, like PTSD, and like, like stuff like that and trauma and it's like a funny show but then sometimes it gets serious and I'm like okay I need to go like uh take a break right now but anyway 
there's a lot of shows that I'm watching right now and I like when they have it all at once especially because then I can like I I am in control of this I can watch however many I want and however many I don't want to watch and you and I, like I'm already fallen behind like I don't need to <laughs> try to catch up as much see I like I don't mind binging something like if it this one's really good but if it's like after it's come in out a while I'm like okay I'll watch this show and then like I binge it and like this is my little thing but when it like when like Stranger Things comes out I'm like oh god I gotta watch all this <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> come on like I so like if I'm watching a new show prefer I don't mind binging like older shows but when I got a when a new show is coming out I'm like please just do this weekly I can't <laughs> I can't do this I can't it's too much yeah. pressure yeah anyway uh anyway bad batch bad batch bad batch would you say has a pretty good fandom i think a, a yes s- the animation fandom no. is pretty good maybe I, for star wars listen it's not like see here's the thing when i'm talking about like supernatural and stuff it's not like it was like a toxic fandom it was just a very particular experience and i can imagine if you weren't there you just don't get it like I mean, truly <laughs> it was I, just something okay um very specific to supernatural it was just a phenomenon you you just had to be there i mean Um, i was but i also had no internet (laughs) well that's what the internet was that internet was school but never like saw never witnessed just heard it was anyway you just um it wasn't like as i mean it, it was like but it wasn't like, like when we talk about like uh-huh. oh like problems in the Star Wars fandom where it's like oh like it could be toxic blah blah blah. It wasn't really that as much. It was just like what it was. I can't even explain it. it I mean, just... I see people now on Supernatural now that I have internet. That <laughs> it's I'm sure it's died down, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, uh, Bad Batch. <laughs> Bad batch. Uh, um bad batch. yeah very good episodes we'll get into spoilers now um my spoiler free thought was just i like it and we should have more bad batch yes. forever anyway, yeah spoilers forever yes um, um yeah so the first episode this week episode seven was the clone conspiracy mm-hmm. what did um, you think it was like i know this is kind of spoiler free but like what did you well, think the clone conspiracy was well so before the episode i thought i in my head kind of connected the clone conspiracy to something like more related to fives and like that conspiracy arc and like clones kind of piecing together like order 66 and like hey i didn't really like want to do that but i did and like <laughs> that kind of thing because mm-hmm. with the clone army you have i don't know how many clones there are but at least thousands a lot a lot more than that probably <laughs> hundreds of thousands to millions you have equal like, amount to episodes in uh supernatural <laughs> you have all of these basically living witnesses to palpatine's betrayal of the jedi order mm-hmm. you know like and once they start to like remember that and like piece it together that they didn't really do that then like you know all it takes is one clone to speak out and start getting that out because you know the narrative palpatine before is like the jedi turned on the galaxy they attacked me they attacked democracy they wanted power yeah um which obviously didn't happen and the clones you know if you get some clones to piece it together they know that didn't happen so Mm mm-hmm but also it's the fear of speaking out for it. Right. Right. But that's, it's just a thing, but it takes one, one clone to get it to the right person. Right. You know, so I thought it would be something like that, but I think I prefer what it was. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was definitely similar, I think. Yes. You were, you were close. You were very <laughs> close. I um, thought it was going to be something to do with like cody and rex and rex trying to get clones to join which technically was but not really like that did happen in the show but that i don't think that was technically the conspiracy no cody sadly 
No. No, the um the conspiracy uh was more related to um the Empire trying to phase clones out, essentially, and not mm-hmm. support them as they yeah. get through. And also related to Camino mm-hmm. and the truth of what happened there. Yeah. Yeah, so we um... start back in seventy nine, which was a cool cool thing to see again i thought 79 was pretty cool in the clone wars Mm -hmm. um and that was a connection to that conspiracy arc with fives yes so Um, if you have a conspiracy and you're a clone just go to 79 (laughs) yes that's That's where all the conspiracy things happen Mm -hmm. um you see there's a bunch of clones hanging out and there's two particular clones talking and one of the clones is um saying how he's like going to get the word out about Camino and he's going to tell the truth and everything and the other clone's like yeah it's too dangerous man he's like I'm going to do it and then I'm going to escape then they're leaving and then they get sniper shot yes. it's like whoa who's this mysterious sniper mm-hmm. um it was not crosshair Fun guy. no but I thought I really liked the helmet my dad did not like the helmet i just oh, really I the liked helmet the helmet was eyes. so cool yeah that's what i, I said i was, was like awesome. man that's a really cool el- helmet and my dad was i guess because how my dad explained it he was like oh well you know i thought it was crosshair so i thought crosshair went from his really cool helmet to this sucky helmet and i was like okay i guess that's fair but also but it's not crosshair like, so <laughs> yeah <laughs> but <laughs> i still point think invalid cool. <laughs> yeah, okay I thought it was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Um, cool. Yeah, and then we get to a Senate scene, and I got, like, when I was watching this, I just got hit by this, like, wave of sadness. I was like, oh my gosh, a Senate scene and no Padme. I was like, this is so sad. Um, And, yeah, no Padme. Um, But we got Tinra Pamlo, my girl from Rogue One. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I always thought her name was cool, and she has such a pretty outfit in Rogue One. So she was just like I just remembered her. Yeah. Uh, and then she shows up in Bad a Batch cool episode. Yeah. She shows up in Bad Batch. I'm like, I know her. I know her. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, and fun fact, uh, someone pointed out on Twitter. So she's voiced by the same actress that played her in Rogue One. Mm-hmm. Um, which honestly, that's a pretty good gig. Like you just kind of appeared in like two shots of a movie like five years ago. And then someone's like, you get called up and they're like, hey, you want to do this voice for your character again? Like, that's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah. And But also someone pointed out that the episode came out on that actress's birthday. So oh. I forget her name, but happy birthday to you, lady. Happy birthday. Uh, good your birthday present. Your clothes are really, really cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool fit in live action and animation. Mm-hmm. Um, But so she and Bale are both so basically rampart's trying to, rampart along with some senator allies are trying to be like trying to argue for the conscripted military which we know rampart's been pushing for since way back in the beginning in season one mm-hmm. and bale and pamlo are both like trying to argue against it like we really don't need to have like we don't really need to do a military we don't really need to do a big military yeah, um, the war is over Yes. And then my girl Ryo Chuchi shows up mm-hmm. and she's like, you know, for her it's not as much it's not as much about a conscripted military as much as like well, we need to like ask what the clones want and like we need to figure out how to treat them. Like, okay, they're not you know, we don't have a clone military anymore. Like, what do the clones do? Like we have a pension, like figuring all that out. She's so ugh, she's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it was really cool, and I um, I couldn't remember her name, but I was like, I don't, what, what is your name? What is your name? And then I, I thought it was funny because that the senators that were for like the new bill, uh, the one senator just kept saying everyone's name after a sentence, and I was like, thank you, I hate you, but like, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I liked seeing her. It was um, it was very nice. Very, uh, just um, her throughout the episode is really cool. No, she's best senator now, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, it was very cool to see her again. Uh, and very cool to see her, like, really fighting the good fight. Um, she also goes, um, she she actually was pulled aside by Bale for a little, like, meeting. And he's, like, recruiting her in the in the rebellion without recruiting her. Sort of, sort of like Mothma does yeah. with that one guy in Andor. Mm-hmm. Um, no Mothma in this episode. Uh, no. I, was, I was looking for her a little bit, but she's, she's busy. Um, fighting with her husband i guess mm-hmm. um yes she should yes um and then we have we see i'm going on your dad's notes we have a uh, rampart he's he talks to that cool mysterious sniper guy mm-hmm. uh and he's like you need to kill because of this clone that it's gonna tell our secrets and also if senator chuchi gets in the way kill her too okay mm-hmm. that's scary um but then we yeah. have Raya. she goes um to 79s to talk to the clones and be like she's just very straight up she's like look seems like no one else is doing this so i'm just gonna ask you guys like what do you want uh yeah. which is very cool of her <laughs> like mm-hmm. you know you have all these you like even you know bail who i love is like in the senate arguing about what they should do with the clones and he's not going to ask what the clones what they want you know so it was mm-hmm. very cool of raya to just be like hey guys like what do you want <laughs> yeah what do you want but there's like one clone that is like no i don't want anything i just want to fight but you know they're all getting old they won't be able to fight anymore so she tries to explain that as well as like no this is for when you literally can't fight uh or even now when they do start the new bill you're not going to be able to (laughs) you're going to be homeless you're going to be homeless no food no money like how will you survive (laughs) he's very much like encouraging them because she's like well what about like after like when you're too old like they're like oh we're not really you know trained to think about that and she's like well think about it like Mm -hmm. what do you want like what can we give you um it was a very it was a very nice scene uh Mm -hmm. you know and especially because we know like clones saved her in her world back in clone wars so seeing her get to to repay that debt in a way or try to at least um Mm -hmm. and just seeing someone care for the clones like as as people um it also made me very because if you've read uh queens oh one of the queens ones one of the ek johnson books i can't remember which one um but Sabe after Padme's death is going through her like files and stuff and she found a bunch of bills that Padme had written about like clone personhood and clone like pensions and like stuff for help to help clones after the war so I like to think Padme would be very proud of Raya here Mm -hmm. yeah very sweet um but she, so she stays there pretty much overnight because it's morning yes. the next time. Um, and uh, what's his name? Slip yes. uh, goes and says like, hey, Senator. Um, so what happened on Camino was us. We did that. Uh, it was not a storm, which, okay. My thing, why did they think it was a storm? How did they, they told say, them it was a storm? Yeah. But like, what, who, like if someone told me like that storm destroyed all of Camino, I'd be like, that's really weird. Cause there it's been storming there all of the time. Right. But I mean like, like what are you gonna do about it? I mean, I personally would question it, but also I'm not a senator. Uh yeah, well, so I don't and know if I, I think would. also the thing is like this is very early in the Empire. So obviously you have some people like Bale who you know with whom Mon Mothma who are very much like rebels and against this who might be like you know be more like I don't believe this but like I'm not gonna pick that battle I'm not gonna win it um and then you also have a lot of times who've probably never even like been to Camino you know yeah like it was a race from galactic from the Jedi records when, when Obi-Wan went to look for it like a lot of people have probably even been to Camino they're just like, oh, Camino, that, like, cloning planet, right? Cool. And, like, didn't really know. So they're like, oh, yeah. this huge storm was terrible. They're like, oh, that sucks. I'm sorry to hear that, man. 
I know, you know but I mean? like in my head of, when they said storm, I was like, dang, how a storm? <laughs> Obviously, we already knew that it hey, was. Man, big galaxy. I'm just like, lots of, a storm. Lots of, lots of crazy <laughs> weather things can happen yeah. on all these planets. You figure how different so. one planet can be from another. Sorry, I don't have mm-hmm. What? Okay. Um, <laughs> that was a lot. Um, yeah. It's, I think to me, it's just like, you know, figure like Ray like going to um uh takudana and being like very surprised by it you know yeah there's some of these you know there's a lot of these senators from planets that like a water world is like crazy to them so like that's tough man yeah crazy storm it's just it's it's i don't know i don't know i was just like a storm was the best that they could come up with like, I don't know. It's whatever. But, yeah. So well, it's they all a little believe... too soon. They're not ready to use the terrorist attack argument yet. Yeah, I guess. They're or just something, something went wrong and everything exploded. And you know what? It's, you know, Empire, it's still a little baby empire. They're working on their excuses for yeah. human rights atrocities. They're not, they're still working on it. Yeah, yeah, Practice yeah. Practice makes perfect. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so they, everyone believes it was a storm. And, you know, Slip is like, no, it wasn't a storm. And Chuchi's like, well, someone would have come, like, someone would have stepped up. And Slip was like, dude, that's what I'm doing right now. I can't, like, like, these, they're scared. They're gonna die if they try to, like, talk about it. Um, And just throughout the episode, this episode, um, I, I don't know why, but I kind of like when people, like, get, like, the acting of characters getting paranoid um i just think it's really interesting to watch and um i i mean slip literally starts being very very paranoid and Mm -hmm. um you know he tells the truth to her and is like you know i was stationed on rampart ship all the documents all the information the evidence is on there um like he backed it up um so you know she that's i think it's afterwards she goes to rampart's like office and talks to him about like a compromise on you know how to help yeah. the clones yeah she brings up a lot of presumably what the clone we didn't really see what too much of what they said they were they wanted but like we see a lot of what we presume they said in that conversation she's talking about like pensions like um all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. and um and he is a little scary, honestly, in that conversation. <laughs> he's been he's been a very good villain. Yeah. Um I think it was a lot of it was established in season one, and I think this far in season two, um, he's really put in the work. He's been very fun to watch as a villain. Uh yeah. but yeah, so he um she I okay. So hold on. So I wish that this had gone so much better like like to start the clone the first clone uh what was his name who was i don't remember oh i don't remember his name i just remember slip i don't remember that yeah i it was like cut or something i don't know it was like Um, it was like a single syllable that i hardly yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) Uh, but you know he was like yeah so I went to Rampart and threatened to tell someone I know (laughs) and then and then it's like okay did you tell anyone before you did that no (laughs) here's the thing here's the thing okay I'm gonna defend him real quick no the clones (laughs) served under jedi for most of their career at this point yeah um and you know there were some not so great jedi like krell but for the most part a jedi would like respect and listen to their Mm -hmm. clones to a point not be i mean just generally not be corrupt you know Mm -hmm. so you're a clone kind of still in the mindset of whatever jedi you served under you're like well you know like my old general like they would have been 
you know like if they did if they did something like that which they probably wouldn't have but if they did they would be like ashamed and like you know they would you know and like it would be a real threat if I like threatened to tell like the council or the senate or whatever so like you know because for the most part like even if it's like you know like Anakin like if Anakin did something and Rex was like Anakin that wasn't cool man like I'm gonna tell Obi-Wan like Rex Anakin's not gonna kill him Mm -hmm. you know probably yeah he's like he would just be like oh man (laughs) Anakin might have been a bad example (laughs) slightly (laughs) depending on what his mood that day but you know what I mean like yeah so I think the problem is like I think a lot of clones aren't used to that level of like corruption like even yeah I forget his name but in one of the first episodes that one clone was like sir i can't like it was just a foreign concept to him like i can't falsify the records like yeah <laughs> like i can't do that like what do you mean i just like, thought it was i'm not saying like man that's stupid man that's not real no it it, it is it, and your your point is definitely correct <laughs> it's just like i was just thinking it is frustrating it, like, it is frustrating yeah. <laughs> i was like wait wait a second why and then you know it got sniped but then you know uh slip tells her and then she kind of tells rampart too she's a little like yeah she's kind of like oh well mentions it she would be like well like it'd be a shame if you know there was more to camino than this or she like asks she's like she's like well what like what really happened to Camino? Are we sure it's a storm? And it's like, girl. <laughs> yeah, no, and she was even like, where were you? <laughs> right. No, yeah, that's what it was. She was like, where were you during the storm? Like, weren't you stationed on Camino? And he's like, oh, I was like, off world. Doing yeah. the training, blah, blah, blah. And then he had the audacity to be like, well, if I was there, maybe we could have saved <laughs> some people. Yeah. I was like, shut up. <laughs> oh, well, and that's like, the other thing, too, is because when we saw it last season, they evacuated Camino. Like, there was all those very, like, almost haunting shots of, like, the cloning facility empty. Mm-hmm. Um, but if their cover story is a storm, um, then so someone pointed out, like, are there just a bunch of, like, clones believed dead that are, like, in secret? And, like, what if that's where that, sni- or what if that sniper is one of those clones? Um, and the other point is, something that was kind of revealed this episode that hadn't been talked about before is like Kaminoans died like a lot yeah like they destroyed we knew we saw them destroy the cloning facility but they destroyed like the cities like everything literally every which is why I'm like a storm could probably do a lot of damage definitely no doubt about that <laughs> but like that much damage I don't know but anyway um uh, yeah, so she kind of reveals her cards, and I'm like, oh, girl, no. You would have been fine. You would have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Like, um, obviously, maybe not, because, like, the sniper would see you, but, like, you would have been okay. <laughs> right, I, but, no, okay, but now that but, she like, said that, Rampart's like, he's like, hey, sniper buddy, take out the center to two. So, yeah, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, um yeah but then yeah. she and slip or well slip is trying to Hide. escape he said he's meeting someone that can make help him disappear mm-hmm. um presumably yeah. someone who's been helping a lot of clones get out uh which is very fun, uh interesting and so they're talking and then the sniper gets slip yeah and then chases ryo Oh, her guards, by the way. They look so cool. <laughs> they look very cool. Some of the <laughs> best guards in Star Wars ever. Yeah. Like, how many times have we had, like, you have the villain, he's like, you have to fight my guards first, and it's like, pew pew, and they're done. Yeah, like, no, these guys best, are pretty good. Best guard. I mean, the one they guy also just, just look cool. The I one mean, guy just got sniped, I guess. Um, that's, right that's, but that, that's not, that's wasn't not his a... fault. Was it's not fault. a skill issue that's just no. like he didn't know <laughs> bad, posi- bad positioning um yeah. but that other guard man like best guard ever yeah <laughs> like I, seriously i appreciate those guys uh um, yeah they, you I know he like thought they looked he cool was too. like fighting protecting her helping her get to safety he got shot and then he kept fighting for a while 
Yeah. What a man. Which, again, which is why I'm so confused on what the physics, not the physics, what the the rules behind getting shot is. <laughs> like, I, I'm i not arguing it, but I'm like, okay, so this guy got shot somewhere on his body and he's fine. Okay, another character got shot in that exact same place and died. <laughs> Like, was it a different gun? Like, do different guns, like, ha- like I'm sure different guns maybe have, like, you know, uh, firepower. I don't know, guns. Don't like, know. damage. It's all about the angle. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But I, was I like, have no idea. Hmm. It, it just, but he's, you know. Maybe he's just, like, like built different. I don't know. Yeah, but he was. Yeah, he no, was he cool. was literally built different. <laughs> um, yeah, but there's this really cool fight with the mystery sniper in like the warehouse, and it's like dark and you can't see. Yeah, and then the, the guy is like he's about to shoot Ryo, and then he gets stunned, and this figure walks out of the fog, and it's Rex. Yeah, that was so, so he, nice to see him. Yes, yeah, so he is apparently he is who the clone who Slip was supposed to meet. To help him get out for which is very nice like rex is like helping his brothers get out um did he help <laughs> cody get out did I he assume so unless cody was I, like yeah, i got this <laughs> I, re- I really i i just i want to know where cody is man you can't do that to me <laughs> um mm-hmm. he's yeah um very cool stuff so yeah so he and ryo meet and then they like tie up that mystery sniper and they took out take off like the front of his helmet and it's a clone um and they make a point to point out like this clone has had any like identifying marks scrubbed they even say something like he's they've removed identifying like whatever like i don't have like clones sounds terrible but like you know like dogs get like some people get like identifying chips in their dog. Like I don't sound yeah. like maybe clones have that, but this was removed. Mm-hmm. So this clone could not be traced back to whoever he is. Yeah. Which I feel like is the clone conspiracy of like what is That's, this clone? But got two clone conspiracies. Yeah. There's well, so many clone conspiracies. It's a whole conspiracy. There's many conspiracies. <laughs> yeah. So um, but I thought can't that be was... limited to just one interesting um like we have these like special clones that can't be traced back to any particular like officer or like legion um and they're doing like sketchy sniper stuff Mm -hmm. and he has one of the like in the mandalorian that like one guy's that like bite thing that like electrocutes him so he can die he has that and he he was so upset well rex was like asking him questions and he would not say anything yeah um he just, oh also like, the garage himself a believer yes um and rex takes him to a garage take him to a garage and he mm-hmm. says a couple friends own it and they're away for a little while and it's trace and rafa's garage which i thought was pretty yeah. cool um, especially because we saw trace and rafa with um r7 last season so Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a nice connection. Yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious about it. Like, like what's Rex doing? Like, how? Like, presumably Ahsoka hooked him up with them. But like, how? Yeah. Ahsoka was um, like, "Hey, so I have these friends. Here you go." <laughs> yeah, I'm a little curious to see like their reactions. And like, Rex knocks on their door and it's like, "Hey, I faked my death. <laughs> can I? Uh, my name's Rex, by the way. Can I? Can I hang out with you guys?" Mm-hmm. um i'm curious about that, or if ahsoka was with them i don't know i'm curious about that story i'm sure we'll get it in some form and <laughs> in some point in the future but mm-hmm. yeah so we have this mystery clone um so i had a thought i have no thought. evidence for this mm-hmm. other than the fact that i think it would be really tragically ironic okay and that's what if this clone or another clone like him is fives right again i have no evidence but like they made a point like to say like any identifying anything has been scrubbed and removed from this clone Mm -hmm. and it's like what if they take clones that are presumed dead because you know 
in Star Wars, like you said, like sometimes they just die from anything, but also <laughs> sometimes they can just survive from anything. That's what no I'm saying. Like, like, you know, in Star Wars, you're only dead for so long sometimes. It's like, what if they like use fives? Like they had his body, right? Because he got shot like what in the chest? That's fine. You can whatever, walk it off. Um <laughs> and like you know, like what fix him up time. and like re like like brainwashed him to like do so. And they do that, that with like cool. maybe clones. But my reason for fives is like how tragically ironic would it be if fives died trying to get out the truth? Um, and now he's basically uses a killing machine to kill clones trying to get out the truth. Yeah, that like, would how be... How sad would that be? But how... Very like, cool. Very sad. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So, um... <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know how they... I, that's a really cool idea, and I really hope, like, it's, like, similar to it, if not the entire thing but like i wonder how they would like bring that back and be like oh like like maybe like they find some records of it and be like oh man they like took fives's body and like yeah that's who it like was I, said, I don't I know how no, they would connect it i have no basis for this other than the it's fact like cool. it's like <laughs> man that'd be kind of messed up yeah no basis <laughs> i can't even really call it a theory it's just an idea um, but even it's like if this because I don't know to me it was like they spent like they really pointed out like this clone cannot be identified so like mm-hmm. maybe like even if this clone isn't fives like what if we meet another clone like him and it's fives yeah. and like what if Echo meets it it's like whoa you know what I mean mm-hmm. I don't know just a thought <laughs> it's very cool thought it's a crazy idea um yeah. yeah honestly though i was terrified because when they take the helmet off right his face is like to the side and then rex starts to turn it over and i'm like oh my god what if there are scars and that's cody <laughs> like for a second that was my thought i was like terrified mm-hmm. um because because like you know because like you know um oh uh, what's his face rampart's like oh yeah cody went missing and obviously he says like it's curious that your people be People around me be deserting crosshair, so I don't think that's the direction it went. That was such like, a rude man. comment. I know it was. was. It really like, was. I like hate, I hate crosshair, but like that is so rude. <laughs> crosshair is such so abandonment mean. issues, and yeah. like <laughs> he did not help. <laughs> um, but no. So like obviously with that comment, I don't think that's the direction they went. But like, man, like what if it was something like this with Cody and like they just like they heard like the like crosshair was a little snitch, and he's like. Yeah, Cody tried to be nice uh, to that lady. Yeah. <laughs> um, How dare he? So then Rampart was like, uh-oh, Cody's gonna be a problem. Yoink. Yeah. Now you're a, a brainless sniper drone. You know? A believer. Yes, a believer. Um. So, yeah, for a very scary second, I was like, oh my god, it's Cody. Uh, but mm-hmm. then they turned his face, and there was no... Oh, I guess they could have erased his scar as like a you know precaution i guess yeah you know i don't know uh, you can do like a laser scar removal right That's i wonder thing. why they do it like what's the point i mean it's it's sort of like what the first order was doing with their stormtroopers you know like you have it, or the theory is that you have like people like brainwashed and their only goal is to be loyal for you you know yeah well yeah that i understand the brainwashing and stuff i just wonder why it's important for them to take out the identification like chips like to just not be identified at all well just i mean at least and i don't know that this might not be like a imperial sanction like a holy imperial sanction project it could be like rampart's little project Mm-hmm. You know, because we know the Empire does all sorts of things, crossing jurisdic- jurisdiction, following their rules only when they find it appropriate. Yeah. So, like, you know, let's say, you know, Palpatine's like, oh, you got to do this sneaky, sneaky, sneaky thing in some other admiral's area. And then so he sends a clone to do it and then the clone gets thwarted and the they pick it up and they scan it and they're like, this clone was assigned to Rampart. 
we gotta yeah you know what I, I mean? guess so mm-hmm. or just like the thing is like like you know you could have like i don't know like some or like even someone in the street of coruscant could be like hey i saw that clone with that tattoo on his face hanging out with rampart you know what i mean mm-hmm. just my yeah. idea i don't know I, had, uh, I was curious that would that would be my explanation but you know also mystery is fun <laughs> yeah that's fair yeah yeah well that's episode seven a very good very exciting start to the episode um i really like Again, I just really like clone clones being like that whole, I don't know, it's like such a whole ethical debate of like the clones and like that like being explored. I always think it was cool. Like even in the end of Clone Wars when Rex is like, yeah, like we have mixed feelings about the war because like, you know, we're kind of like forced to fight in it, right? But also if there was no war, we like wouldn't exist. Mm-hmm. So like that whole you know and then like when Ryo goes to talk to them and you have clones are like well I want to fight like that's that's my thing <laughs> like that's what yeah. I do and like that's, that's what I'm best at <laughs> right like what else am I gonna do you know and it's just it's interesting to see see all that it's because it's so messy and I like it when things get messy it's more fun okay. to watch that's, that's fair <laughs> <laughs> it's it's more fun to think about, more fun to watch. That's you know? not what you were saying when it was like rebels. What do you mean? You were like put everyone in a nice room where okay. they can never get hurt. That's different. Okay, that's different. Mm-hmm. I was a child. <laughs> a child. <laughs> I was. Oh. I was like what fifteen? Fifteen? Yeah. Was it that long ago? No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Rebels was Don't do that to me. 15. No. Rebels was 2015 to... Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. 19, I think, was yes. about the years. I was in, I was literally in high school. I was like 15, 14, 15. No. Early Rebels. Yes. No, that's scary. You were even younger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like 14. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's still scary. Um, uh, yeah, also fine. because the rebels are my babies. Um, That's fair. And the clones are, some of the clones are my babies. Mm-hmm. Cody. Um, Cody's my baby. Mm-hmm. Cody and Rex and Omega. 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 Whenever I hear Omega, it makes me think of, of Bluey. No. <laughs> is, that, is, that not, is that bad to say? I don't know. No? What? I why? Don't know. I don't know. It makes me feel bad. I don't know. Okay. But I'm like, it's Bluey. The airport. 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 I'm not airport. going to the airport. I'm not getting, going to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> um, airport. Yeah, well, speaking of Omega, she's <laughs> back. Oh, there yeah. was no Bad Batch in episode seven. Um, It was uh, like what they did with Hera last season. It was one of those like, we got to give you like all this background with all these other people. And then we'll drop the bad batch in, and then it all makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so episode seven, clone conspiracy, no bad batch, but Rex, been lots of clones, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's very, it's bad batch is very much a spiritual middleman between Clone Wars and Rebels, because while Rebels is like you don't have any episodes without at least one of the Rebels, like yeah, it's about the Rebels where Clone Wars. You can go a number of episodes without, like, the quote-unquote main characters, like Obi-Wan, Anakin, Ahsoka, like, Rex. It's, like, very much the war. Yeah. Um, And Bad Batch is a bit more in the middle. It's, like, mostly about the Bad Batch, but, like, sometimes we get an episode without them. So, very much a a middleman between the two series, which I like. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Truth and Consequences starts us with Omega and Echo. Having a very nice little conversation. Echo's try or Omega's trying to meditate. And um Echo's like, well, you know, like it works better for Gunji because he's a Jedi. But like he also says, like, yeah, I don't really like to meditate. Um mm-hmm. it's a very, very nice little conversation. And then they get a call from Rex. And Rex is like, hey guys, you want to do a job? And they're like, Hell yeah, Rex. Yeah. 
<laughs> um yeah, they they don't even like stop to think about it a little bit because they just go like they're like Coruscant, we can't go to Coruscant. And then, you know, Rex is like, please? And they're like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Anything and for you. anything for you, Rex. Um also they were like really bored, it looked like. Like they were sitting around the ship bored and Wrecker was like yeah let's do something they, he mentioned like they're tired of waiting around for Sid waiting for so Sid yeah Sid doesn't have a job ready for him at the moment um but Rex is there to save the day from their boredom um mm-hmm. so they meet with Rex and he tells them about like the mystery sniper clone and um all this stuff and like Raya mentions how she wants she wanted to get slipped to testify to the Senate about what happened on Camino, and they're like, "Well, we can testify," and it's like, "No, you're supposed to be dead and also wanted criminals on the run." <laughs> so yeah, so uh, that uh, won't work out. No. Um. So instead, their plan is for the basically um the the boys all go break into Rampart's ship, which is sitting in one of the dock things in Coruscant, and Omega mm-hmm. hangs out with Ryo. Um, she gets a she cute gets, little senator, like she gets a poncho, like poncho shawl. <laughs> Star Wars ponchos reign supreme once again. It's mm-hmm. so it's such a pretty little design. I hope she gets to keep it. Yeah, it was so nice. I like won it. <laughs> it was super you think, cute. Like, Chuchi gave it to her, or just like maybe she had just a nice one. No, Chuchi gave it to her. She time. did not have that. <laughs> she did not already have that. No way. They went shopping. She was like, <laughs> maybe I did. a nice jacket. Uh, maybe Ryo and Omega went shopping in Coruscant. She was like, yeah, pick out whatever you want. I got Senator money, girl. Yeah. Um, just... <laughs> oh, I like that image of them going on a little girl shopping trip. For mm-hmm. That's so cute. Uh, especially because, you know, Omega doesn't really have any, you know, any, like, female friends. She had Hera for like two days <laughs> yeah that's, that's <laughs> why Sid. i also liked when uh what's her name v like was oh uh, yeah pirate yeah. lady was in her life because like she needs more female yeah she in has life. like she has sid who's not very nice she has v no. sometimes hera for like two days and then she has Ryo. although i guess Ryo won't get to hang out again but it's just very nice mm-hmm. get her little poncho it's so cute um yeah yeah um, they also, oh no, I dropped my AirPod. Um, they run oh. into Bale. Um, and Ryo's like, oh yeah, like some associates of mine are going to help get evidence. And Omega's just kind of standing there. Yeah, she's just um, kind of listening. Yes. And um, they, uh, also Ryo explains like the Senate and what senators do. And how they try to help people, and Omega's like, "Oh, who's the clone senator?" And yeah. I was like, "Well, uh, that's the problem." Yeah, I thought it was funny. I was like, uh, "Like, this is Omega realizing racism against clones." <laughs> like, Omega's like, "Man, racism sucks." I just learned about racism. That, sh- that sucks. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, um, so she learns that, it, my bad, she learns that, and, you know, she's just kind of like, I mean, it's like, this entire thing with Omega, like, just seeing the politics of it all, like, you know, politics is politics, and while I'm not super crazy about politics in, like, Star Wars, I think it's still really, really interesting and really cool, and we do when we do get it, it's, like, really intricate and, like, you know, talks about topics that like even you can apply to real life and blah 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 but seeing this through like omega's like eyes kind of or like just having omega there to witness that makes me feel like how i usually feel about certain politics where i'm like wait that's not fair why (laughs) so i i don't know i liked seeing omega like go through this and learn it because one she gets to learn things other than like ships and how to hack into things and she gets to learn about like the reality of why you know clones need this representation yeah and it's it's also it's very interesting 
to see Omega's reactions because, you know, like Omega's day to day life is like, you know, it's like she un- she obviously understands like they need to get money. They're trying to do this. Like she understands like those elements. Mm-hmm. Um, but her day to day life is like, okay, we go here and we like shoot these things, and then we you know we do our mission. Like we help these people like very on the ground. So her getting to talk to Raya, who doesn't do any of those things, but still helps people, I think is a little eye-opening. But also she's like, you know, like you said, like, it's kind of like, wait, what? Why? Because, like, you know, you have all these people talking in a room (laughs) about stuff. And she's like, well, like, that's not, like, that's not my life. Like, how are you (laughs) helping me? Like, almost, you know? Mm -hmm. Very interesting to get her, see her learn and start to figure that out. Um, Yeah. Um, but also a little heartbreaking because it's like I know honey I know (laughs) yeah yeah um yeah so the clones they're working on breaking into Rampart's ship um Mm -hmm. Uh, well you know Omega's with her they're being sneaky sneaky yes extremely sneaky and I thought it was funny because I was like oh like this sounds a little mean, but I was like, "Oh, well, Omega is not good. Is not going to be there. The mission should go pretty smoothly." <laughs> and it did it's not. True. It did not. No. But like, well, it just proves, you know, it's not Omega that causes a problem. Yeah. <laughs> she usually causes the problem earlier, but if she doesn't, something's going to happen anyway. Yeah, <laughs> it's bound to happen. I just was like, "Oh, well, mm-hmm. never mind." <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they end up like hanging on to the bottom of a ship and like flying in wrecker is not enjoying he still does not like heights um yeah, I, I I mean, he's like holding on and rex is like i thought you said he likes was better heights. with heights why like you know. can good question. die well i just thought it's funny rex is like isn't he supposed to be better with heights and tech is like yeah this, this is, is him, him. better <laughs> yeah hey listen rex don't hate on progress okay takes a yeah. while um we also have Ryo giving a speech um basically accusing Rampart in the Senate of what happened. Oh, she also talks to um Halle Bertoni. Yeah. Which was a, another we've been getting a few Clone Wars deep cuts in recent <laughs> episodes of the Bad Batch well, I mean, and I love it. Yeah, it's um, it, like re- it's just relevant. It's really cool to have that relevant. Yeah, well that's the thing too. It's like they're these like pretty like characters and I would say minor but like basically minor characters from like a couple episodes of the Clone Wars. Like Halle was like a one of the people um suspect in like Anaconda Far's murder and I think that was like really the only thing she did in Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. But, like it makes perfect sense for her to be here because she's the Kaminoan senator and they're asking about Kamino and what happened there. And like her people, um, it was it was like you know it's cool how they can like bring these characters back, but it, it never feels like I don't know like oh and look remember this guy oh and look remember this guy like it, yeah. it's very natural which I like, mm-hmm. um but yeah that was another like cool, like you know between Gunji sort of Ryo it's like oh wow like they're really pulling <laughs> pulling back Clone Wars story arcs it's cool yeah um. Oh, I yeah. did want to mention when like Chuchi and Omega are together and they're roaming the halls, and then Rampart comes by, and he it's does. like, "Oh, you're alive! Oh, that's that so was... interesting." <laughs> I was so stressed. Not as much for Rob. He's like, "Oh wow, you're alive. That's interesting." But I was like, "Does he rec? Would he recognize Omega?" That's that was like I was my thought the whole time. I was like, "Recognize Omega? Would he, would he recognize her? I don't, but I don't think he ever saw her face to face." I guess, but I think it's so funny because she remembers him. She was like, she yeah, so so <laughs> um, She was ready to bark. Like, yeah, it was so funny. Um, um but yeah. yeah, I was I was a little stressed, but I guess I don't know. This is interesting. Um, I get because I think if he saw her, I don't know if he saw her in connection with the Bad Batch. Like I think he would have seen her following around that Kaminoan lady. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in the cloning center, but I don't think I I don't think he would have thought about her enough to really commit her face to memory. And yeah. B, I don't think he connected her to the bad batch. He's just like, oh, little girl. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who is this little girl with a really adorable poncho? <laughs> the uh, poncho threw him off. He he yeah. never could have recognized her with that poncho. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah. So she's giving her speech, and she kind of gets towards the end of her speech where she's accusing Rampart of stuff, and the other senator is like, "Okay, well, like, do you have proof?" And she's like, "Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, basically." And she's like stalling. Um, very, very Padme move, Ooh, honestly. Well, uh, when she does have that meeting with, uh, whatever scrunkly Kaminoan senator. <laughs> Tony. He's scrunkly. <laughs> um, like, they, they talk, and she's, like, t- talking about how, like, she doesn't care. She didn't care about, like, kind of what happened on Camino. She doesn't care because now all of her people are scattered everywhere. So it's, like, there's no point. And, like, Omega gets so mad. Like, rightfully yes. so. But, like, I was worried because she just flat out was like, yeah, I'm a clone. And I was like, <gasps> like, I, I was worried I was like, that, oh that God, information that. was gonna, like, come back to bite her. But, like, there was no music. There was no, like, Chuchi going, <gasps> don't say that. Or, like, anything. So I was like, oh, okay, she's fine. But, yeah. Hyper I, does not care enough. No, she was just like, okay sure <laughs> whatever um but yeah i i again this is just like me <laughs> or just you know anyone who'd like like you know you're just so confused on why people don't care about other people or why they're just willing to let people just die and like it, it's it's so frustrating and like it's so nice to see that in omega i don't know yeah no, yeah. I totally agree. But yeah, uh, but then yeah, like you were saying, she was like, ah, kind of stalling uh, yeah. for that um, evidence. Meanwhile, the bat. So like, they have to turn the ship on to get into the like memory bank thing. Mm-hmm. But if they turn the ship on, it's gonna alert people. So a few minutes, so they turn the ship on, and all the clones are like, hey. That what ship happened? is on. <laughs> Why is that on? Go. Um, and then they have a little little firefight with the clones while they get the information. Mm-hmm. But then they escape by they stun all the clones and they get into the escape pod and like launch the escape pod out and it lands like in some random part of the shipyard so while all these clones are or they launch I think they launch did they launch like all the escape pods or something? Yeah, they launched it's, all of them. Pretty good strategy, because this did in the first episode, basically, mm-hmm. <laughs> when they launched all the, like, cargo boxes. Um, so while yeah. the clones are, like, searching all the escape pods, they run out of theirs, and they get the, it looked like a little briefcase thing, with the, the data from the ship um, to Chuchi. And so she goes, she, right at the end of her speech, just in time, plugs it in, and shows, like, a big projection of Kevin yeah, Noah. Oh my god. Kevin being bombed. <laughs> literally caught in 4K. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> that was that was crazy. I don't know what I was expecting to be shown, but like it was just there. It was just it was literally the hologram up. <laughs> of them destroying it. Like it pretty solid so... evidence. What kind of gets me though is like like a big thing they mentioned a lot in Rebels and stuff, especially like Hera always talks about like we have to wipe Chopper's memory whenever we go to the base so he doesn't remember the coordinates. Like, we wipe the ship's navigation logs. That's, like, a thing in Clone Wars. They're trying to track Cad Bane, but he's wiped his ship's navigation logs. It's like, yeah. dude, you can't delete that footage. <laughs> I just, I, I don't, I don't get why they, like, had it in the first place. Like, why is there a recording thing for your ship? Like, Especially when you're an imperial ship, or like I guess yes, now imperial I ship. Like I know, like I don't know, maybe they use it to like learn. I don't know, because yeah, that's a I great question. Like, like why did they even? Rec- <laughs> My question was why didn't they delete it? But that's an even better question. Well, why is it recorded? The is they, I think they did delete it, but before they did, like the clone backed it up. 
backed up that in for did they, this. Did they say that? I don't, yeah. I thought he just said, I thought he just said the records are there, but not like I put the records there. Like, no, just look on the ship, it has I, records. I think it was the other guy. I don't remember his um, name. I feel bad now, but I'm pretty sure he said, like, yeah, I told him I was going to like release this information. Um, but, but then I, why would I it still be it on his ship? Because he said, I don't know, I don't know how things work on Star Wars anymore, but he said know. he backed it up on the ship's drive. That's all I remember. Oh. Um, Interesting. But, yeah. Yeah. Cause... I wonder, one thing I wonder is, because I think they were still, they still would have been like Republic ships. They wouldn't have been newer Star Destroyers at the time. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if it's like Republic ships all had cameras so they could like learn from strategies and study droid maneuvers. So it just still had a... Yeah, I guess yeah. so. That makes sense. I just but then I they was got rid of it for dumbfounded when I saw that. Are... Yeah, I was like, yeah, no, oh, literally, whoa. Rampart's just like Rampart had the funniest "I'm caught" face ever. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, and then you know it gets real ominous. Well, Massimeta yeah. is pot in the middle rises up. Yeah, and that's the thing is that like the entire time uh like grandpa's been like hey make sure this follows through hey make sure chuchi's not like a threat hey don't let this get pushed anymore so yeah uh, oh my god that that whole scene was intense and then it got more intense yes <laughs> uh the pod in the middle rises up and it's mr palpatine himself and mm-hmm. he's basically like wow i, ca- I can't believe Rampart like, oh, did man. that like he I can't believe he did that to to try and get his bill passed like that's that's crazy man like <laughs> um I can't believe that happened like I'm so sorry Camino and Rampart's there like I was following orders mm-hmm. um which is a great excuse yeah um, but he, I mean you know he did it was Tarkin's orders but you know still a great excuse and um Palpatine's like like that's crazy I can't believe he did that like He'll be punished. But, like, you know, I think the fact that the clones followed his orders really shows that we need, like, not, we need, like, not we clone not troopers. Clones. We need stormtroopers. Um, Because that's like better. He, yeah. He's like, the fact that, like, you know, the clones followed orders, like, we can't have clones. They're no better than droids. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, like, the way Which, he twisted it so yeah. masterfully. I think it shows like what makes Palpatine such a a great villain because it what what makes Palpatine so good isn't as much that he can perfectly plan everything out from the beginning, but that he can adapt so mm-hmm. instantly, and he can twist twist the situation in his favor, uh, which makes yeah. him so cool. It's just yeah, that was, and. Omega was there too. Like she, because she grabbed the information from Bad Batch to run over to Chuchi, who she gave to Bail Organa. Bail Organa was like, here you go, you play it. I don't want to play it online. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but she was there and like that, uh, like, yeah, it was, it was like, I was like, dang, this guy's good. Oh <laughs> no! And after, like you know, Raya was very much like, like I did everything right. Like I got the evidence. Like I did everything. But like he was ahead of us the whole time. Like he still managed to twist it into the Empire's favor. And yeah, uh, and it's true. Omega, like, like she, she was also like, bro, we what happened? Yeah, no, she's like, we did it. Like we achieved our goal. Like. We did the plan and still, like, same outcome, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't wait for Ryo's Rebel arc after this. Be like, man, can't do this right. Where's Bail Organa? <laughs> like, we gotta go the other way. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, and then, real punch in the throat at the end of the episode. <laughs> Yeah. Everyone like Wrecker and Hunter and Tech are like, well, good luck, Echo. Like, goodbye. Like, thanks no for hanging out with us. You can always bothered. always come back. And Omega and uh, me and me. Yeah, everyone. Are like, what? <laughs> Wait, what? 
Uh, so yeah. it turns out Echo um, is staying with Rex. Um, and he's leaving the batch because he wants to be doing more of what Rex is doing. Helping the clones, seeding rebellion. Um, which Versus you know, what the, the batch beginning... are doing, which is missions. Which Hunt Echo has expressed this wish since the first episode of this season. Yeah. But it's still like, oh my god, you can't leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I that was I was like you jerks didn't even tell her? <laughs> like you could you I guess he like, told them told when me. they were doing their little mission. Yeah. And, but my thing is like you could have like not told me as the audience. Uh you know, I would have you know, that's fine. Whatever. But you didn't tell Omega. I know. My thing was like like, okay, like, so let's say he really decided and talked to Rex, like, while they were doing or on their way to or on their way back from that little mission they did to get to mm-hmm. Rampart's ship, right? So, like, he tells the Batch. The Batch knows. So they're not yeah. like, okay, Echo, we're gonna give you a minute to talk to Omega now. Or, like, you know, they all sit down with her and talk to her. They're like, all right, bye, Echo. And she's like, what? Wait, what? Like, come on, man. Yeah, um, that was tough. She gives him a hug. Um, Echo says he's going where he is needed. Um, and he talks about like how he joined the batch, like because that was where he felt needed then, like where he fit in more. And now that's just changed, and he he feels more aligned with what Rex is doing. Um, just very good character moment for Echo. I'm sure this won't be the last of him. He tells Omega, he's like, this won't be the last time, but she still hugs him. Yeah. And then they fly away without him and she hugs her little Lula. Uh, that was a punch in the throat, just as you yeah. said. That was like, <laughs> was like But it was like a good one because it was like, like in the moment I was like, what? It was like what? a punch in the but throat like, and then after... I'm like, hey, are you okay? Sorry about that. Well, <laughs> not even that. It was like the punch in the throat. I was like, oh my God, like what? Like I was surprised. But then after I thought about it for like 20 seconds, I was like, oh, like this... It wasn't like, you know, like, I was like, how could you do this? Like, this doesn't make sense. I was like, this makes sense for what yes. Echo's character has been this season. It was That's surprising, true. but it wasn't like, I was, it was very quickly like, this makes sense, you know? Which yeah. is the best way to do a surprise, you know? Mm-hmm. You don't want to do a surprise that doesn't make sense, or else it's just, just not fun. <laughs> but it's more fun when it makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, someone, it's also been pointed out that they very much mirror the shot of the Bad Batch leading Crosshair with Echo leading the Bad Batch, but Crosshair is facing away from them and Echo is facing towards them. Mm. So, chew on that. <laughs> Fun tidbit. Also, Crosshair gets wrecked. <laughs> like, uh, like, man, everyone leaves you that's crazy like it's so mean i'm still like wow you didn't have to do them like that like that was too harsh but anyway yeah (sighs) yeah that was sad it was it's funny though because we when i was recording the podcast with my dad uh echo was there (laughs) so uh he started crying halfway when we were talking (laughs) about it so it was kind of funny um but yeah, it uh, it's a very good, very good episodes, and I am glad, st- uh, like you said, that like they, you know, Echo went, and you know it made sense, like yes. that it was now, you know. But uh, heartbreak still. Um, my only concern is like, okay, Echo goes with Rex, right? Yay, they're besties, except. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't not... show up old <laughs> echo's not in rebels so um what's going on with that does he go back to the bad batch but like are the bad batch okay like yeah <laughs> um <laughs> you know because like you know also like you know because rex in rebels is like i'm settling down i'm not fighting anymore this isn't my fight anymore i'm i'm old man um and so it's like maybe Echo, when that happens, Echo's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to settle down. I want to keep fighting. Which I could see. I don't know, man. Oh. He united in Rebels and it's like... Yeah. Frightening. Mm-hmm. 
very scary for what the future holds for these guys. Um, but yeah, uh, he's going to be doing good for now. We know that for sure. So, yes. Yeah. Um, um yeah. so yeah, very very good episodes. Um I'm really excited to see uh, this was a, such a huge it was a pivotal point in all of Star Wars and seeing that being elaborated on cuz we always knew like the Empire switches from clones to stormtroopers, but getting to like see that happen um was really cool and see all the players that went into it um why it happened how it happened was really really cool and i'm glad we got to see it glad to see more ryo more um rex uh and like i said i'm excited to see the repercussions of this like are the bad batch gonna turn the stun off when they're fighting stormtroopers instead of clone troopers Mm -hmm. um you know is that gonna happen like what's gonna happen like in the short term like what's gonna happen to all the clones as they conscript people you know like we see by obi-wan kenobi there's that clone trooper like that veteran sitting on the side of the street um Mm -hmm. and like how do we get to that point and you know are some like i could see some clones like maybe you have like successful mercenary clones because they're good at what they do um then also you have clones like that one in obi-wan uh so I'm really, I'm excited to see, I'm excited to see Crosshair's reaction to this. Um, I imagine him eating his, his sad little clone lunch and then <laughs> he gets a call and he walks in the office. It's like, you're not Rampart. And he's like, oh yeah, he's in jail. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um. It looks like everyone who's associated with you leaves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also, like, you know, what's going to happen? Like, is Crosshair just going to get dropped? You know, like, once they start phasing clones out quicker? Like, what's he going to do? You know, but also, like, will they? Because he's, like, a special clone, maybe? I don't know. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm very curious about... Um the rest of the season and how they recover from this but also let's have some like other adventures too like some of the episodes before this like you know maybe tech can go racing again that would be fun um Mm -hmm. you know yeah more doordash i'm i'm good with uh the fun episodes i like those those are cool good good mix it was a good good mix (laughs) Mm -hmm. but yeah so the next episode is called the crossing uh, so for all we know, it could be like a very, the crossing could be like they're crossing the threshold into some big philosophical something and they're struggling with whatever, or it could be like they're literally helping like an old lady cross the road, you know, who knows with this show. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited either way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. That's, I guess that's all I could say. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. I'm good with literally anything they put out there at this point. Like, yes. they want to do a fun episode? Go for it. They want to do a serious episode? Go for it. I'm just like, yep, I'm, I'm satisfied. <laughs> they do it very well every time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that was the Bad Batch. I'm very excited for the crossing next week and for the rest of the episodes. We're also just getting ever closer to the Mandalorian season three, uh, which feels like not real somehow. I don't know why. Um, but we're getting up on that. So very exciting stuff coming for Star Wars in the next few weeks. Um, for Star Wars Geek Girl, you can go to StarWarsGeekGirl.com for a monthly poll. Uh, Twitter and Instagram are at SWGeekGirl, and Facebook page is just Star Wars Geek Girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for the Rogue Rebels, uh, there's the RogueRebels.com, Instagram and TikTok at Rogue Rebels, Twitch at Rogue Rebels, podcast wherever you're listening to Star Wars Geek Girl. Um, uh, like I said, for the Rogue Rebels, um, you know, we. It's talking about the same episodes, but we both have different views of it still. Um, so, oh yeah, 
Did you cry when mm -hmm. Echo was leaving? No, I did not. Oh, okay. My dad asked me and I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> I didn't. I got very sad, but I actually did not cry. Okay. That's very interesting. Very different. But yes. Yeah. Um I did. <laughs> Confession, I did. But anyway. Uh yeah. Facebook page at the Rogue Rebels. Twitter at Rogue Rebels. Bam. All right. Thank you so much for listening. I was Zoe. I was Lizzie. May the force be with you and goodbye. Goodbye. Star Wars Geek Girls. They're geek girls that like Star Wars. And sometimes cry.